The consensus <laughs> number two overall just threw a dunk down that might make you go Victor who when running back returns. <laughs> So this is Scoot Henderson, who is, by all accounts, going to be the number two pick after Victor Wimben- Victor Wimbenyama, easy for me to say. Um, that's a grown man dunk right there, guys. And, and look, this kid went to the G League at 17 years old, playing against grown-ass dudes in America. Um, and I'm sure he's kind of loving the Victor stuff because it puts him a little bit, I don't know, less pressure. Am I wrong in thinking that? Does he have a case to be number one, Chandler? No chance. And, and this kid can't play <laughs> And he is a hooper and he's going to really, really help a team. And I think as much as Victor is number one, Scoot is number two. And I think it's land size. I think, I think Victor could tear his ACL tonight and he'll still get drafted. Number one, this kid's a freak. He's a unicorn. We've never seen a prospect quite this good. Uh, but but on the flip side, Scoot Henderson can play. He can score the basketball. He's got a great build. He's athletic. He plays smart. He can play point. Uh, and that dunk last night was extremely impressive. Uh, but it's just, no, this, this Victor is too big. He's too long. He's too skilled. Uh, I do love the fact that they're both playing against pros and grown-ups and they're not in the college ranks or, or high school it's it's they're competing at a very high level and they are dominating at a high level so whoever gets the one or two pick i'm honestly kind of stoked it's gonna it might turn out to be whoever gets the number two pick ends up happier than the number one pick because this kid could end up being that good and you never know with a big guy like victor with his body and his health so I think this kid's in a great situation where there's not a lot of pressure. Everyone's talking about Victor, and this kid could easily come in and and be better than Victor early on in his career. Yeah, I think we might see that. We might see him win Rookie of the Year. We might see him be the better player for a few years as Victor kind of uh, assimilates to this style of play and the physicality and, and on and on and on. I think if you're picking Scoop first, if you're even thinking about it, you're basically banking on, you know, the potential over the hill. And it kind of reminds me of uh, Kevin Durant versus Greg Oden uh, in that season where, yeah, if you didn't want Oden, it was because of the health. And we saw how that played out. It's, it's played out that way a few times in draft history. And you you, you just never know. So you're going to want to do your due diligence. I think Scoot is going to be great. I think there's it's an archetype that all we already have in this league and that makes sense. But the potential of 7-6 wing who can dribble, who can do all this stuff. It's just too much to overlook. I just cannot see uh, Greg Popovich probably uh, deciding to not take all of that and and see what that does for the next 10 years. But Scoot is that good. He's, he won't be 19 until next month. He's that oh. great. And whoever gets him at two, they won't be disappointed either. And you can do a lot of things with a dynamic point guard who can play make the way he can and who's that athletic. Um, but I just cannot see a team going against the grain here. You, you got to see what you get with Victor Wembanyama. I mean, I, look, I think the scoot's in the best case scenario because the pressure is so much less. Um, but then you get to have the added motivation of always being referred to as the number two. I, I To me, whoever gets scoot, I, I'm with you guys. Like, they might actually win that. And it's gonna, it's crazy to say now. But I also believe in this pressure situation being a little bit too much for, uh, for kids. Yeah, it's almost general. easier to get the decision taken out of your hands, right? You're yes. at two. And he falls to you and you go, cool. I remember um, with the Celtics, they wanted Jason Tatum. They were going to take him one overall. They ended up trading him back with Philly. And they said then, we wanted to take him one. We were just a little worried. Every Markel Fultz was the clear consensus, number one overall pick. We saw how that went. Sometimes you just got to pick the guy you think is better and go with that. But, man, you'd be hard-pressed to take anybody over Victor. If you, if you don't take, if you pass fun. on Victor number one, that's how you get fired. If he turns out to be anything <laughs> what they expect him to be. So if you get the number one pick, you have to, but there's no pressure on the number two pick because this kid's yep. scoop is just falling right in your lap. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a good spot to be in. Uh, taking a quick break. When we come back, we won our parlay kind of, uh, I'm going to try to explain that in my best possible ability <laughs> when run it back returns. 